Part two. Smile, you're on camera. It's glued to the phone. Not even paying attention. Oh, whatever. <laughs> We're doing a part two. We're going to jump into the AFIT testing and then, because I know guys wanted to see that, um, I'm going to roll the repair, the removal and installation of these injectors in there. It was a process filming all that, okay? Um, it's a lot harder to film the repairs, in my opinion. So mad respect to those guys out there that do that stuff. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get into it. Enter to continue. Power up self test passed. Fuel system interface connected to DMV. Vehicle D base verify pass. 14.2 volts. Enter to continue. New vehicle selection. I'm looking for a 2010. Chevrolet. Could there be an in? This tool's kind of slow. Well, I mean, dude, let's be honest. 30 grand. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think that's been around for a while. You know? It's a good tool. Yeah, it was this yeah, morning. Yeah, for sure. Should I go through your car seat in this truck quick? You'll never know. It's got to be quiet the whole way there. You can't talk at all. Then you won't know you're injector test. <laughs> We're going to run a new test. There is no vehicle interface cable connected to the DMU. Connect the SID interface cable G1 to the DMU. SID G1. That's the one we need out of our kit. That's gonna hit. That's gonna connect in right there. Okay, we're hooked up. Connect the SID interface cable G1 to the DMU. That's the drive and measurement unit. That's what the DMU is. All right, so do we go cancel? To go back, run new test. Okay, connect link adapter cable to vehicle link adapter. Do not connect the DMU injector test cable to the vehicle at this time. Wait until instructed at a later time. Turn key on, engine off. Okay, so. So the link adapter is basically the, is the adapter that goes from um, the tool here to the, um, to the DLC. Okay. Do not connect the DMU injector test. So what they're saying is don't connect it to the ECU. All right, so let's go ahead and enter. Establishing connection, retrieving vehicle VIN. All right. Does this vehicle start and run? Yes or no? Enter Enter for yes. Verify that vehicle is in neutral or park. Um, and parking brake is set. Start the engine. When vehicle is running at idle, press continue. Runtime equals 60 seconds. Okay, so verify that vehicle's in park. Or, all right, we just gotta set the park brake. Start it, um, and then we hit enter. So let's go ahead and fire it up. Whoa. I don't know if it's going to matter for the park brake, but we'll give it a click. Just to set the light, and then we'll be happy. I don't want to make it mad. Okay, leave engine run at idle until prompted to turn engine off. So I think right now it's getting a base value stored. Okay. Almost done. Alright, 
turn engine off when engine stops leave key off with engine off press continue Disconnector, uh, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our ECU, connect it to the drive unit, and the tool will take over from here. So I'm, let me go ahead and disconnect that, connect that, and we'll move on. So you can see that this basically simulates the pins, simulates all the pins it needs to take over as Mr. PCM. And there's various adapters for your different GM mics and models. All right, we're all hooked up. We're charging. So, start test. Uh, turn the key on with the engine off. Okay. Key is on, engine's off. And start test, hit enter. Injector's electrical measurement. Okay, injector flow test fuel rail charging. To charge fuel rail, pressure the um, to charge fuel rail pressure, the engine must be cranked. Verify that the vehicle is in neutral or park and parking brake is set. If manual trans, press clutch pedal. Okay, let's go ahead and enter and it should automatically do that. And you can hear the injectors flowing pressure wait until fuel rail pressure bleeds off to proper charge okay crank the engine <clears throat> crank the engine cranking will stop automatically use the AFIT up key to crank engine CCU real quick. Fuel rail pressure stabilized delay. Injector flow test fuel rail charging. The injector flow test is in progress. Please wait. High pressure leak testing rail. This thing's been going down the highway and starts missing real hard and no check engine light, nothing, no codes, and it just comes out of it. And it's intermittent, it's usually under a heavy load, it'll do it. This is the girlfriend or fiance's car, so figured I'd make a film on it. You can hear them injectors. Now it's checking the low pressure. Okay. Crank the engine. Cranking will stop automatically. Use the AFIT up key to crank engine. You just gotta hold it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Stopped automatically. Now it's stabilizing again. You can hear it flow in the injectors. Analyzing. That was injector one. Okay, now we're going to do our oh, testing injector one, so we'll go ahead and crank again. Okay. You'll hear it. Okay. Kind of a cool deal. So it's analyzing injector one data. Okay. On to injector two. We'll go ahead and crank it again. And again, you just hold it. it stops automatically. Now listen for injector two. There it was. <laughs> so 
So it's kind of an, <clears throat> I mean, obviously it's an amazing tool, but very expensive. When you get these injectors having issues, it's a nice tool to have. Let's go on to injector three. Listen for it. There it was. Alright, injector four. Listen to it. The injector making that buzz noise. How is it? Is it a spring? Kind of cool. Alright, on the injector five. A few seconds here. Let's go ahead. Injector six, can you do me a favor and hold this? Just hold this so it doesn't bounce. Yeah, I don't want this to bounce off. It's not gonna electrocute you. Just hold this red one. It's just hold it stable. Just the red one. Just this one right here. Just hold the pressure right here with your two fingers. You gotta hold the whole thing. You're gonna push. It. Grab the whole thing and just kind of hold pressure on it. Not a lot. Just okay. And here we go. Uh, you can let go now. Thank you. That's all I need is for it to abort the test. We're gonna have to start all over again. You're spilling again. Drink it right. All right. View test results. Let's go ahead and do that. So enter. Loading data. Let's take a look at what we got. Let's see if we were having flow. We're having flow issues, which I suspect we are. All right. So it's saying it passed on the high side. 34 psi drop. Low pressure pass with a zero psi drop. So there's a little bit of a psi drop, but. That high pressure could be dropping because of leaky injectors. So let's go ahead and hit um, press up or down to see scroll results. Let's hit down. Vehicle tested. Okay, ECT was 156 degrees. Um, I had made sure it was nice and hot when we run this test. Oh yeah, we got flow issues right there. Okay, so you can see um, cylinders. Um, one, two, three, and four. Uh, five and six are fairly decent, but four for sure. Uh, two for sure. Let's scroll. Um, now they give you a percentage. I, I, I mean, for warranty, they they go off of this, but um, I'm not a fan. Like um, anything more than you know, two to three percent. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not liking it. So let's see what we got here. So it looks like uh, four, two and four for sure. Yeah, I'm not liking two and four, and I'm not liking number three, but definitely number four has got some serious issues. Um, so no negative would be, um, you know, restrictions. So two and three have or two and four have some restriction and three has some restriction we could try running a cleaner through it but they're direct injection so um 
for sure it's going to need three of them. I would say three of them. These two might be starting to leak down a little bit. Um, gives us our cranking voltage. Our peak PSI was 1000, so it's not a high pressure issue. Yeah, so pretty cool. Guess we'll start by taking this off, huh? Get the mass airflow out of the way. Pull our air box. Drop them. Take your cover off. Get the engine cover out of the way. Go ahead and take the air horn off. Disconnect our fresh air breather for a PCV. all the way off. Now you want to check and make sure there ain't an excessive amount of oil in there in the catch. And there's not. So this one's uh, doing pretty good. Back valve cover's been done on this one on the dirty side of the PCB. If yours is full of oil, it's time for a valve cover on the back bank there. Just put a new valve cover on it. She'll breathe right again. It's time. Yeah, it's about time. All right, let's get that throttle body off. What we need there, 10 mil? So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna take the fresh air breather off so we don't lose it. Set it up here. Otherwise you'll end up losing that down in the engine. I'm just gonna take these all the way out. We'll clean the throttle body if it needs it. Do an idle relearn. I mean, you're in there, you might as well just do that stuff, guys. Clean the air box out. If there's any debris, I've just cl I cleaned this one out not too long ago. I see a little, little clip for the air horn is sitting in there, of course. This thing's had chains done on it already. Made sure of that before we bought it. Now this is the older intake system on this. So you see we got a metal throttle body gasket. I'm not replacing that. Although, you should. If this were a customer's car, I would definitely would replace that. This is our dirty side PCV hose. That comes off the back valve cover back here. Here's that tang. You just press it, lift up off the valve cover. Now that piece, that's actually your PCV valve back there. I don't know if you guys can see that here let me zoom in grab a flashlight so if you're having oil consumption problems on the 36 that nipple right there is the PCV valve and it's built into the valve cover so just put a new cover on it and I'll get rid of your breathing problems dead indication of that is when that air horn is full of oil you're probably wondering, some of you is going to be wondering where your battery's at. We'll get to it here. Alright, so I'm going to show you the proper way to disconnect the battery on these because somebody probably don't know. This is where the battery's at. It's under this cover. Now you're going to have to pop these panels up to access it properly. So gently pull up like that and out or you're gonna bust this all up I'll be breaking plastic okay that's a Torx what size is it not that one yep nope, that size that size right there you need Torx 
I'm using an ATD kit, ATD-125. This is a security Torx kit. Works really good. Cheap, online. Pull your panel up. Okay. We're just gonna take the battery negative off, 10 mil. Give it a wiggle wiggle. Come on. There we go. Stuff it over to the side. Or lay something over it. So it can't touch. All right, give yourself a few minutes. You don't have to give yourself a few minutes. You're disconnected, okay? Every, power's disconnected. So now we can take that heavy cable off the fuse box safely, okay? Without having to worry about it arcing or you know, arcing to the body ground, okay? All right, getting back to where we were. Now that we got the battery disconnected, take this heavy cable off the box. <clears throat> and then remove this heavy cable for our alternator. You got this clip here, right? We're just gonna go ahead and cut that. Put our uh, nut back on the box. And then we'll snip off this end. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Here you go. So rather than try to yank this out because you're gonna wreck it, snip that off. I mean, you can do it if you want, but probably ain't gonna go in there real well. These are basically just a zip tie. There you go. So then, when you wanna re-secure that back down, you just take a zip tie. Voila! Okay? Don't cut your wiring. Okay. Be careful. There. That one's off. And that's coming unwrapped, so we'll rewrap that. Uh, let's see. What else we got to take off? Uh, we got to take this breather hose off. So we'll hit that with some brake clean. set of these I got mine from Mac whole player set they were on sale years ago but you might want to get yourself some of them they're nice Just gently grab onto it give it a couple twists that is not your PCB valve a lot of people think it might be but that's just it's just a fitting this one's actually loose in the intake. So let's take that off. It goes back to your brake booster back there. <clears throat> okay, we can just set that off to the side. Secure it out of the way so it ain't flopping in our way. These are like the easiest intake to take off, okay? Get everything right away down here too, as best we can. That's good. Alright. Let's go ahead and take this back. Just to hold it back so it's not flopping in our way when we're trying to work. Nothing more annoying than that. 
you can get things done and you get harnesses and stuff in your way. So bungee straps work pretty good for that. Okay, one of those 13s. Yep. I'll just bust all these free quick. By hand. Don't hit stuff with guns when it comes to bolts in the intake or head or whatever. I don't know. I'm just not a fan. I always crack things loose by hand first. Because you can pull he uh, threads out of the aluminum by hitting them with impacts. But teach your own. Have at it. That's not how I operate. Let's see. Some Cornwell Blue Power. Just bought these impacts. Pretty nice, actually. I got a set of 3 ace impact um, shallows and deeps for like, I don't know, 150 bucks hit for both sets. And they're nice sets, too. Cornwell, we got, we got a Cornwell guy now. Seven millimeter all the way through 24. Does not skip sizes. Solid. I really like Cornwell actually. Just never, it's, you know, I haven't had a dealer in a long time, so. But he shows up and he's a good guy and I buy stuff from him. When it's in your way, remove it. That's my theory. I don't care if it takes me extra time. I don't like breaking things. Some of this stuff is hard to get. Not necessarily on this engine, but on some cars. You ain't getting that part. Especially right now. In a Biden America. You don't bite me. All right. What do we need there, 10? Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that about our wonderful president. What a joke. All right, so, is that it? Where's the other one? Oh, oh that, that is it. I think I got them all. Oh. There. And this rubber or this foam that they use for insulating the high pump is really brittle when they get old so just be careful it'll just crumble there we go get out of the way i'm just gonna put this 10 mil that holds it down back where we took it out all right and there's that last one that 13 Go ahead and loosen that. That is the short one. So this is the gasket. It's the same gasket, but on the newer ones, they got this lower gasket, but then they also have upper plenum uh, rubber gaskets, okay? So anyways. This one's just older. So let's go ahead and take this gasket off or intake and that can go in the garbage because we will be replacing it. Better to be safe than sorry. I just use shop rags. Now, carbon choke cleaner works great and I'm probably gonna do that We'll spray some carbon choke cleaner down in here and uh, decarbonize these valves because they get nasty. I don't actually want to take a peek and see how bad these ones are. Uh huh. Oh yeah, these ones ain't too bad, but um, these direct injection systems, they like to carbon up pretty bad in there and you can kind of see oh 
let's see here. You can see all the crud build up on the valves. Okay, now top tier will clean that if you run in regular induction services. I'd, I'd probably recommend just doing it every 30K. Okay, run a good induction cleaner in there. Doesn't matter what brand, just run some, you could even run seafoam through them, but you're gonna wanna change your oil afterwards. But the other way to do it is just manually clean them. And what I do um, is obviously I'll be changing the oil after I do it, but I spray them down with carbon choke cleaner, um, get down in there with a pick and I scrape around the valve as best I can and blow it out with compressed air. It's messy as hell, it gets all over the place, but once you get them nice and clean, uh, you know, it's gonna run a lot better. The valves will seat better, okay? You're not gonna get it all. You're not gonna get all the valve seats perfectly, okay? That's what a cleaner's for. That can take care of the rest. But getting those big chunks out, well, will make a big difference, okay? It'll help loosen the stuff up. And then um, <clears throat> when you run your induction cleaner, it'll get the rest of it. Those valves are not horrible, guys. I've seen way worse than that. Way worse. And it really depends on how much oil is getting through that intake, you know, coming through the PCV system. The more oil, the more crap you're gonna have build up on those valves, okay? Blow the crap out of here quick. As best as we can. Now we're gonna pull this insulating foam out that's either gonna be eaten up by rodents or missing because the last guy I forgot to put it back and put the intake back on and because he's trying to beat the clock he's like I ain't taking that intake back apart just for a piece of foam. You can't really blame the guy, but don't forget it. All right. Stuff these back down in their holes. Two fingers works the best when you're popping these in there. I'm just making jokes. All right. Probably demonetize my channel because I had my music blaring. I got no F's to give if you demonetize my channel. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm just trying to make videos to help people and hopefully somebody learns. Look at all that crap down in there. This ain't my primary job. So if I make money on YouTube, great. If I don't, oh well. All right. I mean, I appreciate the fact that I'm making something on YouTube. It, I mean, it's nice, but I just like doing, I just like doing this stuff. So it's kind of like my hobby, you know? And I'm in a good mood. So I'm turning my music back on. And I'm going to get more coffee. So I'm gonna turn on my music and I'm getting more coffee. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Ah. Might as well smoke while I'm blowing. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm trying to get this rail out. I'm gonna tell you, before you even start, you might as well just get the penetrating oil and just douse them down and let it soak. You're not gonna hurt anything because you gotta clean it out down in there anyways. And they all have to come out at the same time. 
We're just gonna crack that high pressure line free. Yes, you should replace the high pressure feed pipe and the intermediate pipe, but, and I'm talking about, this is the intermediate from rail to rail. We're gonna take him off. We also are gonna take off the feed pipe, okay? You gotta replace these with the yellow tags. But this isn't a customer's vehicle, guys, so I'm not too concerned about it, all right? I've reused these before, but for safety reasons, in a professional, uh, on a professional job, I would never do that, okay? So before I hear any flack about it, I don't want to hear it. And I know somebody's going to be like, well, that's unsafe. What if you have a fuel leak? A car could start on fire. Well, if you use common sense and you know how to tighten them down, you won't have that problem, right? Not advocating anything, just saying. 17 millimeter. So, it really just kind of comes down to common sense. This thing's been sitting long enough with the battery disconnected. I highly doubt it's got hardly any pressure left in the rail. So, I'll just crack them free. But, you know... Obviously use common sense, like you don't want to be cracking these if you just got done running the vehicle. There's like 500 PSI plus in these rails, okay? And there we go. We'll just take it right off the high pump. Here's your high pump right here. Ow! Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, kind of. I don't know if you can see that. Right there is the high pressure feed feed pipe from the high pressure pump, okay? Again, I'm doing this at home, so keep that in mind. And it's my vehicle. Well, actually it's the, it's the fiance's vehicle, but I'm not too worried about it, guys. I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of work on this engine platform. I am not concerned. And that's just the way it's going to be. Okay, here's your rail pressure sensor. That's got to be disconnected. There's a tang on the back side. You got to compress, push down, pull up. I got it first try, but if it gives you trouble, this is the tab you gotta press. Um, the best thing you can do if before you start breaking things is get a get yourself a little pick. Okay? If you you don't have the strength, come in from the back side and gently get underneath. And just kind of gently pry that tang up. And you can do the same thing without using the tank, okay? And all I'm doing is I'm prying right, right on that, okay? Hopefully you can see that. All right, now I'm gonna tell you, in order to get this rail out, we're gonna have to take this pressure sensor out. So we'll do that. But there's always an alternative. Always ways around shit. I mean stuff. I don't know, can you even see what I'm doing? Hold on. So I'm using this and I'm just loosening it up. All you gotta do is get it to crack free. Add the sides gently and get it to break free. Once it's broken free, it'll spin out. This is totally not the right tool for the job, but you know what? It works. There it is. Like I said, they don't get tightened in there all that tight, guys. Okay? That's all there is to it. Don't 
go tweaking on them too hard, you'll bend the injectors. Because I'm not replacing all of them. I, I'm only going to do three injectors. But we're just going to kind of loosen them up by shaking them a little bit. I did put that penetrating oil down in there, so that should help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are starting to come out. That's why I put penetrating oil in there, because I'm going to be replacing the Teflon seals anyways. So, I'm just wiggling them, just to kind of get that penetrating oil down in there. But what you might want to have on hand, and if you don't have any, get one of these. Because they do come in handy for this, you guys. If you don't have a set of these, I would highly recommend you buy some. Minor snap-on, but you don't have to have snap-on, okay? A pry bar works too, but just be careful when you're prying on these rails because you'll bend the injectors if you're not careful. Oh, is this the right one? Sure is. Right. You know, like I said, you got to get them all popped up free first. Side here. Just be careful what you're prying on. Oh, 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 oh. Progress, progress. This backside needs to come up more. That's where this guy comes in handy. They do make a special tool for it. I didn't grab it. I never use a special tool for these. I just use this, but they do make one. If you feel you need to have one, because you're just that anal. Uh, is it this side that comes out first? I believe so. You gotta take off first. But the front ones are completely loose, so they're moving along here. This is nice. Just be careful because the harness clips onto these. It's kind of a screwy design when it comes to these injectors. The key is just to gently rock them as you're pulling up, and they'll come out. Once, once it pops free, it's it's not so bad. Just keep working them; they'll come out. It's a real slow process, but they will come out of there. this back part that's always a pain. But once you get them loose, it slides right out. And we are caught up on our harness because if you look here, there's a zip tie. So don't forget that zip tie because that's where it's gonna be secured again. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me zoom in. Show you that zip tie see it so you got to get that zip tie up or you got to cut it we'll replace it there we go that should give us a little more room huh let's get the other side up Now the injectors are still down in there, that's okay. 
All right. They're not fun, but once you get them off, they're not so bad. Okay. Still got one on the end here that's being difficult. There's that one. Now the injectors. Yeah, we're gonna wanna make sure you remember which injector's which here. Because I'm only doing three. And again, they got these tangs, and if they don't wanna come up, so you get a pick. Come in here, just lift that up. Go. So just so everyone's clear, cylinder two, four, six, one, three, five. Bank one's on the back side, guys. One, three, five, two, four, six. This is injector six. Let's make sure we clarify that because it's kind of important in this case because we're only doing the ones that I to be bad the other ones I'm just gonna clean up put new seals on them and probably run a top tier through it after I'm done injector clean so these are kind of a kind of a bear you can replace just the harnesses the sub harness if you need to sometimes they're road damaged and whatnot or they're brittle um, so this is four four is pretty clogged Get these other ones out. Uh, let's see, this one feels like it's pretty seized down in there. Again, it's kind of a screwy setup because the injectors hold the harness down. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to get these um, injectors out. But once you get them popped out, the rails popped out, it's not so bad. It'll go together a little easier than it came out. A little. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can't pop this guy out of there. Oh, I might have to get this one first. That's why they want you to replace everything. They just don't want fuel leaks. That's the big thing, safety. So again, this is my vehicle, or you know, my personal vehicle, or the fiance's vehicle, so I'm not too worried about it. But if it was a customer's vehicle, it'd be a different story. It's getting everything, because of safety. Um, and I've already told you what needs to be replaced. Let's get this, get these other injectors out of there. So, 
take a look down there. You'll see how the harness kind of clips onto the side of the injector. So everything's kind of got to go together simultaneously. That cylinder one, the little ears that they clip into on the harness are really fragile, so just be mindful of that. I've already, I think I broke this one, number six, just one of them, which they break, guys. It is what it is. This thing is old, it's 2010. It's 12 years old. If you're that worried about it, buy a new harness. Number five. Well, oh, what do we got left? Number three. And number three. And then this is injector two. clogged up quite a bit of carbon build up on those tips so okay so I'm gonna end it right there we're gonna have to make this probably like a four-part series and it is what it is it's just getting too long it's gonna be too much um, I'm gonna be cutting too much out and I'd rather not cut too much out because I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to see as much as possible so I hope you enjoyed it. There's definitely more to come. I got a lot of a lot of footage to go through. Um, maybe dry for some, but you know somebody out there will find value in it. A um, lot more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.